Ready, set, go. <laughs> it's June 2nd and I'm Pat Sloan and it is my daily challenge. Quilty challenge, jumping June. When, uh, when I was a little and we lived in Europe, I don't know what, whether it was the British kids or it, whoever it was, they would say, ready, steady, go. So my youngest brother, who's 12 years younger than me, that's his favorite way to say it, is ready, steady, go, rather than ready, set, go. Okay, today is actual putting the thread and the needle through the fabric. We're going to free motion quilt. I want to do a little discussion about ergonomics and again go back to our drawing so we can look a little bit about how we want to do this and how we want to approach approach our panel so you've got a warm-up piece and i highly recommend that you get a timer greg got me this super cute pink timer i'll link to it it's so cute it's pretty pink pale pink it is so pretty uh, the timer is good because I want you to try to do this at least 10 minutes a day. That's always my gig. Uh, but if you have a timer and I know you can do it on your phone or whatever, but it's kind of fun to actually have this sitting here and you see the numbers rolling, uh, so that you can glance over and go like, okay, I only have, you know, a little bit more. You don't have to be pulling your phone out or anything like that. Um, because the, power of practice is doing it every day and that's why we want to have several panels so that you can get through those where you have your you know your little work worksheet pieces that you can get through those so if you've only got one of each then when it's full you make another one until the end of the month you just do one after the other after the other uh, i am going to be so excited to see how your progress is super excited okay Ergonomics. I am at a Koala Studio table and they're fabulous. Uh, you can customize these to whatever, you know, height you want, size you want. You can visit your local dealer. You can see their website online so you can get a feel for it. You can do room organization there. Now mine is taller. I have never, once I, when I got this table, I had never had a working table that was taller. So I actually have a foot um, shelf inside because I'm on a taller stool because this is working height. When I stand, this is working height to cut and things like that. So for quilting, uh, if I were sitting in a regular chair, I would be too low. You know, I would be like down here. So your ergonomics is you want your arm, here we come down. You want to be at a right angle, your arm. You don't want to be sitting up. You don't want to be down. You don't want to be here. You know, you don't want to be hunched over. You want to sit straight and you want that angle. You also want to be able to sort of look down, down to the needle. You don't want to kind of be crunching, crunching yourself because all of that will cause all of this to hurt. So the more you sit up straight and sort of move nicely, uh, and, and carefully there, the better it is. All right, so I'm going to do a little free motion. So you, the, the, this camera, I can't get it to, I don't think I can even, it won't come down below. I'm not working with two cameras today. So I am going to let it come down as close as it can. So you can sort of see what's going on, but I can't get it behind me. That, I mean, I don't have the table behind me to sit it on. So at some point I will have to use two cameras to do this, but you can't see the needle. The needle is right here where my finger is. So the needle is there, but I'm going to go ahead and add free motion a bit so you can at least see how I'm holding it. This is a small piece. So I also will talk about the butterfly, but today I'm just going to, I'm going to do that. I'll talk about the panel, but today I'm just going to do this one. I need to pull the thread up, pull the thread up from the bottom. I just take the needle down take the needle down and then pop the thread out and there's the the bobbin thread so the bobbin thread and the top thread and I will hold them over to the side and then just do a couple stitches in place 
and then now I can start moving. Now all of this is in the way, so I generally will just chop it off. I am working with, these are uh, spray basted. If you have pins, then you have to constantly be taking the pins out, which might be a reason why you wanna try spray basting. Okay, so uh, because this is a small piece, I don't have a lot of bulk to worry about. I don't have drag. I just have this little table. Think about table toppers, table runners, your panel. There's really not a lot of drag. I mean, there's not a lot of problem with you just sort of easily moving along like this and smoothly, you know, working towards what's happening. Now, I am doing this with just my hands laying on top. That's a, the reason why I don't even have to be thinking a whole lot about it is because there's no bulk. This is just a square. So this is the easiest way to start because you're not fighting with bulk. You're not fighting with drag where it's like pulling, pulling at you because it's heavy. Um, you can work on speed. That's the one thing you'll be working on. Like if I go faster, I need to move my hands faster. Otherwise, I'm just perforating perforating things, you know, the, the stitch length will be super tiny. Uh, you have to kind of find that sweet spot where you're comfortable with the speed and then you make your hands match that. So let's take a look. Whoops, where are we at? Let's take a look. Uh, in, 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 in. And remember, I'm going to link you over to Debbie Brown's website. She has a lot of videos, I'll link you to the videos and her, you know, tutorials and things. Uh, so if you want to learn more, she's an, my friend who's a quilting expert, so I want you to check out her stuff. So here's my stitch length. Uh, it's, it's great, you know, but you want to then flip it over to the back and be sure that on the back you don't have any kind of, where is it, this is the one, with, any kind of weird stuff. So like right there, I did have some pulling. So let's, let's switch this over here so I can, here we go, come down. So I've got what's called, they call these eyelashes. You see that? So on the back, it was pulling and that almost always happens on a curve. And when that happens is I was not keeping my speed. There are bigger stitches there. So I was not, I had not kept my speed of my hand and the machine in the, in, in the right sink. One of them was off. So therefore I made bigger stitches and it pulled. Now on the front, it always looks great. It's almost always, whoops, sorry. <laughs> it's very up close since I wasn't, <laughs> ah. There we go. I'm getting all out of whack here. The can move the camera. So, so up front, it always looks pretty good, even though on the back, it might be a little out of whack. So that's what you want to be testing as you do this free motion. You want to be sure to flip it over and you actually look at the back of it every single time so that you don't do a whole quilt and then you have all of these eyelashes or loops or some sort of bird's nest on the back because what happens is the front almost always will look fine. It's underneath that is a mess. So that is a key item that you need to do for your testing is to flip it over, uh, flip it over and see what's going on. So today you're going to start just doing some loops. Those are the loops that we drew yesterday. You're going to just draw some and then sit down <clears throat> and start practicing. They will, they will probably come out like shaped like eggs or ovals in the beginning. They might be jagged and that that's just fine. That is what you're practicing. <clears throat> so you just have to keep doing it and, and, and keep working on smoothing, making them smooth and not get frustrated. You're not allowed to get frustrated. <laughs> I know, I know. That's a hard thing to say, but there's no reason to be frustrated when you learn something new. You can't learn it immediately. You have to give yourself some time and some practice and it will come. So the design, let's just move the butterfly over here so you can see a little bit. So on my butterfly, I have got, you know, the one nice thing about the panel is I have things to outline. So in the book, 
I talk about panels and how to follow, follow them to really practice what you're doing. Uh, same with, so like, here is, here is the panel I did in the book. And you can go watch on the video today if you want uh, and see, there's a link underneath that picture to the video on the website. But the, the shapes give you something to go around. That gives us something to focus on. And so if I was doing a shape, like if I had a butterfly, okay? So if I had this butterfly and I wanted to be quilting him, out, outline quilting him, then I would be doing like this, right? So I would be coming around and then I would be coming around again. That would be called, you know, echo or outline quilting. Now, if I decided that I wanted to do something inside each of the, you know, wings, then that's what I would do. And here's where you can take your paper and just make a little bitty sketch and then think through, just think through in advance, like what do I want to be doing? Okay, that's a lot to think about for today. Today, if you decide all you want to do is do loops and loops all over a sample piece today and fill up a couple of these, uh, that will be great. It doesn't take long to fill them up because they're not very big. If you decide, okay, mine aren't too bad, then I am just going to loop to loop for, you know, 10 minutes on my panel without following an outline. Maybe the outline for your panel will be on the next panel you do. That's why you need to have more than one. You need to have a couple panels so that you can try different things on each one. Okay, day two. Ready, steady, go. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I'm so excited that you are going to be quilting every day. Get your timer out, 10 minutes. I love you, you can do it. I know you can do it. I'll see you online. Bye-bye.